Hi. My digging up of this information was prompted by a young earth creationist presenting this argument to me here on the YouTube site uh, just a few hours ago. So, note how this proves that any, anybody with half a brain uh, can use the internet and dig up the relevant information that shows uh, very quickly just how silly a lot of these young earth creationist arguments are. Young earth creationists have produced and are using a relatively new argument in geology where they claim that using carbon-14 dating of diamonds this shows that the earth isn't millions and billions of years old because obviously uh, well with carbon-14 dating remember carbon-14 can only be used to date things back to around 50,000 years now, now however I want to mention that there's uh, a newer technique that scientists have developed using a technology called accelerator mass spectrometry and or AMS you look that up on Google accelerator mass spectrometry and uh, they can use this to measure uh, much smaller amounts of carbon-14 than they could use uh, well before the technology was developed so they've extended the measurement of carbon-14 so that you can date things back beyond 50,000 years so so it's been pushed back to, uh, you know, with the state-of-the-art labs, they can now date things back to around 70 or 1,000 or 80,000 years. Of course, remember, as you push that back, that as you get close to the limit and you're dealing with smaller and smaller amounts of carbon-14, um, that date has a larger error range. So typically, you know, you might see dates of like, uh, if you're dating something relatively young with a lot of carbon-14, like let's say it's dated to 20,000 years, so you might have uh, 20, uh, 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 an error margin like 20,000 years plus or minus, uh, you know, 800 years. Or I actually don't know what the exact error margin is at that point. But once you push, you know, it's a percentage. It's like one or two percent. Uh, but if you push it back way back close to the limits, 70, 80,000 years, then your error margin is going to be a lot wider. So it'll be dated to like 75,000 years plus or minus 10% uh, because remember you're dealing with very tiny amounts of carbon-14 and uh, anyway let's get back to the point and the point is that obviously if you can if you could really date something using carbon-14 um, knowing that 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 thing whatever it is that has the carbon-14 in it um, that that carbon-14 uh, is uh, is actually measuring the age of that thing then you know that that's less than 80,000 years old. And so that's what they're saying about diamond. And therefore, they say, since we can use carbon-14 dating on diamond, then uh, that proves that the geologists are all wrong. You can't... <laughs> that the diamonds were, were produced in, in, uh, through geological processes millions or billions of years ago. Uh, note also that this is also similar to the argument that young earth creationists make about oil uh, and coal. So you'll also see them use this, this uh, same argument beca because carbon-14 can also be detected in oil and coal. Now, uh, here's another backdrop of information, and that is that uh, this is fairly common knowledge that carbon-14 is produced in the atmosphere, and that's because cosmic rays come in and hit nitrogen-14 atoms, and uh, a small fraction of this, these nitrogen-14 atoms are converted into carbon-14. Carbon-14, of course, being the, uh, the isotope of carbon. Remember, uh, the stable isotope of carbon is carbon-12. And so when the carbon-14 is produced, that's the radioactive isotope of carbon, which decays into carbon-12. And uh, that's how you can use it to date. So that's a little backdrop of information. but. Here's the things that, that the creationists are not telling you. And this has been, a, uh, scientists have been aware of this for, uh, for well, since the late 1980s is when they first be, uh, started to become uh, aware of this process. And that is that carbon-14 is literally produced, not just in the atmosphere, but also produced in the ground. Only this time, it's not because of, obviously not because of cosmic rays hitting the atmosphere, it's because of uranium, radioactive uranium and radioactive thorium that is in geological deposits in the ground. And as the, ura the radioactive uranium and thorium decays, that also produces radioactive rays that, that, uh, that can hit carbon that's in the ground and 
create carbon-14. So carbon-14, again, this is now... Uh, uh, this is not generally well known outside of, of the uh, scientists who work in these areas, the geophysicists and physicists, is that carbon-14 is, is produced in the ground in uh, certain geological deposits as well as produced in the atmosphere. Um, create, young Earth creationists have ignored this fact. Uh, either they've ignored it or, they're, or the, uh, the scientists producing these arguments, who should know better, are deliberately omitting this in, this relevant information because they know that it it uh, it destroys their argument. So of course they they would leave it out just like they typically do. So yet again, with this relatively new young Earth creationist argument, we we see their typical pattern. Uh, because of their ignorance of the relevant science, they've developed a new young Earth creationist argument that's already been explained and it's already known to be wrong before they even made it up. <laughs> so, just remember, every time you hear a young earth creationist making an argument about science, you can never believe it. Check out the facts and confront them on it and uh, compel them to dig into the facts too. Uh, d d don't let them rely on young earth creationist propaganda. Yeah, uh, Compel them to say, look, you need to deal with the real science. You need to check out the real science literature and stop relying on the pseudoscience literature, the propaganda that's being pumped out by these young earth creationist religious houses, organizations like the Institute for uh, Creation Research, Answers in Genesis, uh, Creation Research Society. Uh, th here's the other thing. If these guys were really serious about doing science, then what they do is they would they they present this information. They'd write it up in a in a in a professional according to the professional standards of professional science. And they would and instead of like trying to make arguments to uh, to uh, just religious people who don't work in geology, who have no expertise, no, let alone not having exp any expertise in working in geology. They don't even have any education or training in geology or physics or, or, or astronomy or whatever is relevant to the argument. Uh, instead of presenting it to them, what they need to do is, like I said, write this up according to the professional standards and submit it to the professional journals that, are, uh, that publish research in these relevant areas, you know, whether it's in geology, geophysics, astronomy, or whatever. That's where they need to present the information and present it to... Uh, people who who actually work in those fields of research, who are experts at it, and who are actually dealing with this, with whatever the specific topic or subject is, uh, so that that experts that know that know a lot of details about the subject can review the claims of the young earth creationists. Of course, here's the deal: they don't do that. They don't even try to do it. That that also tells you something about their lack of integrity. <laughs>